Welcome back. You are watching Battle Factory, and also me, Jason Krell, and Marty Kobe. You remember this guy? You just heard him a couple minutes ago. Hi. Yeah. Glad to be back. Uh, we've uh, seen some really competitive matches here in top eight of Masters. Uh, everybody throwing heat like they've gone Ultra Instinct today. Oh, wow. uh, and I cannot wait for yet another Incineroar uh, standoff. Yeah, and so we've got two players here, obviously, one that you saw yesterday in Joseph Costelliola, and we have Nathan Wright, the Canadian player, coming down south, as it were, to uh, try and win his first regional in the Masters division. He does have one as a senior, did top cut in 2016 at Philadelphia Regionals, and has qualified for Worlds before. So a talented player in his own right, looking to make his first, I would say, really big splash here. And I'm sure he's happy to be in top, back in top cut after uh, a couple years drought. Yeah, and uh, we had Joseph on stream yesterday, and he was uh, having a splash of his own with oh, the yes. uh, Megamanectric <laughs> uh, Rain Dance and the Tapu Fini Watarium Z. Um, Nathan also sporting a very powerful team on his own. Uh, he's got his own Tapu Fini, uh, but he's got some uh, he's got some spicy surprises up his sleeve. Not going to reveal too much. Oh yeah, uh, want to keep that protected for the games right. for your own enjoyment. And he's got a Pokemon that we haven't seen in this Gardevoir and the Aegislash, the Incineroar, the Landorus, uh, Tapu Fini of his own, and the Zapdos, which has been super popular, but we hadn't seen it a lot yesterday. Instead, we saw the Manectric, which uh, Joseph is rocking, alongside the Celesteela, the Porygon 2, Incineroar, Tapu Fini, and Snorlax. So, Marty, how do you think these two teams match up? Yeah, my man Nathan is in fuego right now with those glasses that he's sporting. Uh, I think that alone gives him a uh, distinct competitive advantage. Yeah, uh, no, no and, doubt. Um, don't want to say Joseph's completely out of it, uh, but uh, man, the, the the power of those glasses—it's like a black glasses blues yeah. for a uh, dark type Pokemon. But um, I really like the uh, the Gardevoir uh, really showing uh, in the team preview that it is the obvious mega choice. Um, you know, every trainer really bringing a mega to this game. You gotta do uh, it. And so uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, what that. Gardevoir's got up its sleeve. Well, and I think what's also interesting is, you know, Gardevoir was fairly popular in 2015 because it had that super strong Pixelate Hyper Voice, but they nerfed the, uh, what do we call them, the eight abilities, uh, Aerial yeah. 8, the Pixelate, Refrigerate, uh, all those, uh, and uh, they're a little bit weaker now, so it's kind of fallen off in usage, but I still think it's a very potent Pokemon, and Nathan must too because he's leading it alongside his Incineroar. Meanwhile, Joseph is bringing the Tapu Fini and the Manectric, which we saw do so much work as a pair together in his uh, Swiss match. Yeah, normally you would think that the uh, Manectric Fini is a more defensive type of lead yeah. uh, with the ability to go with a Volt Switch, and really it's there to pivot uh, and get itself into a better position. What we saw yesterday, uh, Joseph revealing the uh, the his, his, his tech game is strong with yep. the Rain Dance on Manectric and the Watarium Z on the Tapu Fini. Uh, obviously, he has to be careful about turn one, uh, avoiding a fake out um, from the Incineroar and uh, not taking unnecessary damage from a powerful Pokemon like Gardevoir whose Hyper Voice uh, can hit for big neutral damage on both of these Pokemon. Uh, Manectric um, is uh, in, a, in a really good position here and is uh, not... Uh, not choosing to Mega, actually. Yeah, well, actually, Nathan <laughs> popping off for some reason. I guess we'll find out what that was about. Uh, the Manectric does not Mega Evolve and no Protect, so the Tapu Fini is what gets faked out. So this Rain Dance is not really doing much else other than softening up a Flare Blitz, which we're not going to see. So this Gardevoir there doesn't have to deal with something like a Snarl, and it's going to be able to fire off a fully powered Hyper Voice, singing like Katy Perry here, <laughs> doing big damage to the Manectric and the Tapu Fini. Yeah, Katy Perry minus the dancing sharks in this rain. Um, <laughs> and I think that he was uh, so excited uh, with that fake out because he, he I think he knew. Maybe he watched yeah. the stream yesterday mm -hmm. and saw that rain dance Watarium Z combo. Uh, very strong combo. But uh, Incineroar, even in the rain, um, is uh, it, it, it's a little bit threatened here. Uh, potentially going to have to switch out. We don't see protect on a lot of the Incineroars. Uh, so in a position where it could get knocked out from a Watarium Z coming on the the next turn and uh, I like uh, I like the hyper voice and the aggressiveness there from Nathan turn one yeah and Cinero are gonna switch out now that it's done its job doesn't want to stay in the rain. Tapu Fini uh, on Nathan's side is much better suited to the environment. Manectric still not going to Mega Evolve. Decides to just Volt Switch, chip this Gardevoir, and uh, pivot into something better. Maybe this Celesteela. I think this would be a really good time to see that. It's basically going to take nothing. Yeah, there it is. Take nothing from uh, a Hyper Voice. And oh, that is a nice, that's shiny now that we can have those. And the Misty Seed activates. So don't forget that special defense is going to make the... Uh, 
the attack even weaker, but we actually see a size shock. So this Finny is what's getting targeted, Ooh. but it doesn't do enough damage. And now, Marty, you know what time it is. Look out for Left Shark. Here comes a Hydro Vortex. Yeah, the uh, the the rain is uh, is is coming in strong. A hurricane type gale from this Hydro Vortex from the Tapu Fini, an offensive Tapu Fini at that, is going to target down the Gardevoir in the rain. Uh, Gardevoir pretty bulky on the especially offensive side, but is it going to be able to live this hit? Oh no, it the, is not. The tour is canceled. Call it off. <laughs> there, down goes Gardevoir. Yeah. And uh, I mean, you know, Nathan gets that free switch into the Tabu Fini, but honestly, losing that Gardevoir, I think, is a bit of a problem for him. Yeah, and without a lifeboat, Gardevoir not able to survive that powerful water type attack, and uh, Zapdos coming in from Nathan, so, uh, and also getting a the advantage of that Misty Train uh, boosting that seed. Yep, it's uh, both these Pokemon flying types. Honestly, that's one of the best things, I think, about these uh, these new items, and especially in this metagame, there's so many good Pokemon that can use them. Yeah, and I was interested to see why uh, Joseph was not Mega Evolving that Manectric, and I think now we see why. Yep. Uh, Zapdos uh, in the back, Joseph uh, uh, calling that potentially, uh, keeping that lightning rod available to support its Tapu Fini, even though it is at low health, as well as the Celesteela. Well, Zapdos doesn't want to risk getting a, an electric attack redirected, so it just tailwinds to get the speed advantage, but it, the Tapu Fini on Nathan's side, already faster, so Joseph's uh, Fini is going to go down there now, even in terms of Pokemon, but this Celesteela has an opportunity to set up a free Leech Seed onto Nathan's Tapu Fini, get some recovery, uh, so if it does end up having to take an electric type attack in the future, it'll be able to recover that health back because you know it doesn't have the leftovers that a lot of Celesteela had. We saw last season. Yeah, and the the Misty Seed will help it out with these Aptos. And now Snorlax is going to come in a Pokemon we didn't see a whole lot. Uh, in, in Joseph's last game, it, it did show up in one of the games, but it was more there to apply pressure. Yeah, and it's there to pressure uh, what's going to knock out the Celesteela, and uh, if you're Joseph, Celesteela is the win condition here, and if you're Nathan, you see he brought the Incineroar, you see he brought the Zapdos, understands that if I don't take care of that Celesteela, uh, I'm in for a long best of three match uh, where I'm just sitting there trying to take down a Celesteela, it's going to stall its way to a victory. Well, Zapdos does feel confident going for a Thunderbolt, but it hits the Snorlax, and that does almost no damage. Meanwhile, the Tapu Fini going to center itself with a nice calm mind, and that's going to give it a boost in its special attack and special defense, but now Celesteela is free to Leech Seed, so both these Pokemon slowly being sapped of their strength, and uh, Celesteela will take that with Glee, and a free Belly Drum here, no uh, no uh, offensive pressure here coming from Nathan, and now Snorlax gets a chance to eat its berry, max its attack, and it is poised and ready to do a lot of damage, unless this type of Fini has something to say about it. Yeah, and not a whole lot of offensive pressure that turn, but with the Calm Mind from Tapu Fini in the rain uh, and the Zapdos there as well which uh, is uh, definitely carrying an electric type move oh, yeah. uh, now uh, Nathan forced to try to target down that belly drum Snorlax but Joseph playing things smartly he has a non-evolved Mega Manectric in the back so can uh, potentially switch that in and redirect that lightning tag because it's going to take a double up uh, from the Tapu Fini and the Zapdos to knock out that Snorlax so uh, still still in a position where uh, the Leech Seed uh, can uh, help its partner if uh, Manectric tries to switch in in that slot. Well, the Manectric doesn't switch in, and Zapdos goes for a Heat Wave, wants to get some spread damage, maybe net a, well, no, maybe a burn on the Celesteela. Not going to work here, though, as the Snorlax takes a Scald, survives no problem, and now that the Leech Seed is out on both these Pokemon, Celesteela says, I'm ready to start slamming Ooh. down from the top ropes, gets a Heavy Slam, doing an Incineroar impersonation. Snorlax doesn't want to attack just yet. It wants to be in a healthy point before that happens and is going to recycle to eat its berry and look at that back up to almost full HP. The rain stops though and that means that those that heat wave could be much more of a factor. That's big time damage from uh, Big Cell Steel over there on uh, Joseph's side. Uh, putting Tapu Fini in range to where a Heavy Slam is a two-hit KO. Oh. And uh, the berry is definitely going to help avoid that hit. Uh, and uh, now it's in a position where it will not faint to another uh, Heavy Slam. But, uh, I, you know, Celesteela, not something that we, we really recognize as uh, having a 
a huge offensive presence no. in the metagame, uh, but a Snorlax right next to it and Heavy Slam doing so much damage to that Tapu Fini, uh, putting Nathan in an uncomfortable position to say the least. Uh, now that the rain is gone, Zapdos Heat Wave will do a little bit more, uh, but as we saw, uh, I mean, Snorlax, I don't think it's thick fat, but based on the damage that that Heat yep. Wave did, uh, you could uh, you could make an assumption there. And um, I, Nathan taking his time. As you can see, the timer running down here. Uh, he's got 10 seconds to lock in a move, making sure that he patiently predicts uh, what he's got to do to uh, pull this back in his favor. Zapdos is going to switch out for the Incineroar, so an Intimidate may come in a little bit handy here, make that Snorlax slightly easier to deal with, or at least uh, if the Incineroar doesn't go down on this turn, give it a chance to maybe cycle in another Intimidate. Feeny decides to go for a Moonblast into that Snorlax slot. It is boosted, but it is not going to be anywhere near enough. So Celestine Steela gets off a free, uncontested Heavy Slam into the Tabu Fini. That's going to do much less damage this time thanks to the Intimidate and a frustration. That is one angry Incinerate says, stop intimidating me. You take a nap. <laughs> Go hang out with uh, with the Gardevoir and uh, now some Leech Seed recovery from the Cell Steel, which really hasn't been touched. Yeah, with that Intimidate, it uh, put Feeny in range to where it would not be knocked out by another Heavy Slam, but the Leech Seed is what did put Tapu Feeny in range of potentially getting knocked out by a Heavy Slam on the following turn. So we see this 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 passive-aggressive uh, offense uh, from the Celesteela, which uh, is what it's there to do. It's there to get those Leech Seeds out uh, and passively damage those Pokemon to where you're in a position where you, you can't really touch it. And uh, with that special defense boost from the Misty Seed earlier in the game, uh, Zapdos Thunderbolt probably not going to do a whole lot to it. Well, it's actually uh, going into the Storlax. I think Nathan going for a one final Hail Mary here, try and get rid of it, Ooh. but Snorlax hangs on and no burn. You notice the Misty terrain went down, so it was a possibility. So Heavy Slam comes out, doesn't quite pick up the knockout, and Snorlax survives, or Snorlax is going to eat its berry, so it's back in a good space. Uh, I think that Leech Seed damage is going to be enough to get rid of the Finny, though. Yeah, it should be. It's going to be close uh, as we uh, patiently await for this uh, Leech Seed is yep. going to yeah, be enough to get the Feeny. Okay, so now it's just Zapdos against the uh, this uh, Snorlax that it's it's shown cannot it cannot touch. So yeah. I think that is safe to say. Game one for Joseph. Yeah, and as you see, Nathan's going to uh, to think about locking in the forfeit. I think he actually ended up picking a move. Uh, maybe he wants to get a little bit more information from this game. Uh, but if you're Joseph, you don't even have to switch into Manetric at this point. Well, Manetric does come in. He wants to give it at least one boost, make use of that Lightning Rod ability. After all, if you're not going to Mega Evolve, you might as well. So Thunderbolt is redirected. Just in case you forgot how that worked. So, Manectric gets a special attack boost. It doesn't really need it. It's just there to watch its fellow electric type go down. And the frustration gets rid of the Zapdos. And uh, Joseph wins this uh, 3 0 set quite convincing. Marty, those glasses uh, didn't seem to help uh, Nathan as much as you thought they might. Hey, he's not completely out of it yet. Okay. Uh, it is best of three for a reason. Right. And we all know that this is Pokemon, the game we love. Uh, a crit, uh, a potential uh, calling a great lead in game two can Accuracy put you right drop. back into it, an accuracy drop as well. Um, I think that uh, Joseph revealed a lot about his team. Yeah. Uh, so revealing a rain dance, if Nathan didn't catch that on stream yesterday uh, here at the Battle Factory, uh, he knows about it now. Um, so what will be interesting is, does he know about the overheat? And right. can he make some kind of play there? Uh, I think if you're Nathan, um, he brought the right tools to win the game. Um, I think you have to bring Incineroar, you have to bring Zapdos, um, and uh, he's got to put a little bit more pressure on the Manectric. Um, so maybe he brings something like the Aegislash mm -hmm. to shake things up a little bit. Uh, I could see him potentially bringing that as well. I think you also probably need to do a better job of preserving the Guard of War because yeah. it also it has high shock. So Snorlax we saw very bulky on the special side, and sure it's. Physical defense is nothing uh, to uh, look down your nose at, but Psy Shock is going to be able to do much more damage. It's single target. Gardevoir is a powerful Pokemon. It does get the same type of attack bonus, so you might be able to break through it that way. Uh, another thing is that, you know, the uh, Muddy Water is, makes it so hard for Nathan's Incineroar to come in because that's the Pokemon you really want to be dealing with the Snorlax. If you can knock off its berry, uh, use Fake Out, uh, to, uh, to to stop it from even belly drumming in the first place, that could come in very handy. Yeah, Incineroar is Nathan's pack to, path to victory. It's got to be able to knock off that berry on the Snorlax. It's got to be able to, uh, if he brings Porygon 2, knock off the Eviolite yep. on Porygon 2, uh, be there to hit a strong Flare Blitz on that Celesteela. Uh, it's got a lot of work that it can do in this game. It just has to avoid the Tapu Fini uh, this game. Well, and I think that 
that is also such a problem when one Pokemon has to do so much work. You know, it, it's going to be stretched pretty thin. And uh, I, I don't know if it's going to be able to pull it off. But I think Nathan, if he uses the rest of his team to support it properly, maybe he gets one of those, another Tailwind off. You know, that could come in handy to make sure that he's outspeeding when he needs to. Um, you know, what do you think about this Landorus even, too? Uh, I, another Intimidator might be able to help mitigate that uh, that belly drum boost a little bit so that the Aegislash doesn't have to worry about something like a high horsepower as much. You know, we don't know the full move set necessarily, but uh, it, it's I think there's a it's, it's going to be a tricky one for Nathan. Yeah, for sure. And I think the uh, the Rain Dance combo with a Watarium Z from Top of Fini definitely scares you yeah. from bringing something like a Landris who's not going to appreciate that, uh, even if it's running something like a Bulky Assault Vest variant. Right. Um, I think uh, a well-played Incineroar is Nathan's path to victory here. Well, Joseph realizing he doesn't need to do anything here. Why? Stop a good thing, Manectric and Tapu Fini. And we're seeing the Tapu Fini lead from Nathan this time alongside a Zapdos. So they're actually uh, both bringing their Electric types and they're both bringing their Alolan Guardians and they're actually on the same side. So we got a bit of a stare off. Yeah, great lead here for Joseph, um, I, and I think it was a great lead in, in game one too. Right. Uh, so not taking any way, anything away here, but uh, I, he's in position where he can be really hyper offensive with this lead and the rain dance. Um, I think uh, I mean Zapdos. The only thing that it has to hit the Manectric on the other side is Heat Wave, which isn't going to do too much in the rain. No. So Manectric can comfortably set up the rain here. Um, the only thing you got to look out for is do you set up Nathan's own top of Fini, right. which has shown the Calm Mind which can set up one Calm Mine uh, and be ready to scald down the Manectric. So Manectric uh, can uh, Volt Switch here. Well, so Manectric does decide to Volt Switch, wants to start chipping away at that Tapu Fini. Actually a pretty decent amount of damage, so Joseph's going to have the opportunity to pivot into something else. Uh, maybe a, maybe the Snorlax here, which we saw, yeah, was able to deal with both of these special attackers quite well. It honestly is in a, a very good position to start setting up. But Joseph, or Nathan actually, not afraid of, uh, of this Manectric, decides to throw out a Thunderbolt. And this is a double target into that Tapu Fini. No, okay, so that was actually Joseph's Tapu Fini, which gets a big Moonblast off onto Nathan's. And uh, the Calm Mind here, Nathan taking a slightly more passive approach with his Fini, but he's slower. And even with the boost, he's very low and is potentially in a position to faint the thing is, though, I think Zapdos uh, is not going to be able to Thunderbolt quite so freely. Yeah, we saw the Wiki Berry on Nathan's Tapu Fini, and uh, he'll know best if it's in a range where it can survive a Moon Blast from the opposing Tapu Fini and be able to snack on that much-needed berry. I like the aggressive play from Nathan, mm -hmm. Thunderbolting into that Fini with a Manectric on the field, but I also really like the play from Joseph to get the Snorlax on the field while Incineroar's not there. Well, Zapdos switching out so Gardevoir can come in, Mega Evolve and start firing off some Hyper Voices. The Trace is going to pick up the Misty Surge, so not going to be a factor here. Don't think Gluttony would have made a difference either. And actually, Finny switches out on Joseph's side for the Manectric. So Lightning Rod not going to matter, but it's certainly threatening the Finny. However, a Moonblast into the Snorlax will start chipping away at it. As this Belly Drum happens, it's going to max the attack, bring it pretty low, but, you know, obviously that's what the berry is for, and it'll be right back to where it was after the moon blast. So, um, you know, Snorlax now in a position to start doing what it did in the first game. Yeah, and that was uh, that was pretty important there. Um, if the Zapdos had been slower than the Feeny on Joseph's side, maybe that Gardevoir comes in and traces the Lightning Rod yeah. and then uh, mitigates what the Manectric can do uh, in terms of targeting down that Tapu Feeny. But uh, because it played out the way that it did, uh, Nathan's uh, Joseph's uh, Manectric can target down that Tapu Feeny after a Mega Evolution. Should be able to pick up the Knockout comfortably with the uh, Electric type attack and Snorlax left to do big damage. I think it's out of range of the Psy Shock from the Gardevoir, so oh, yeah. it can snack on a berry uh, with a Recycle or choose to just go on the offensive. But I like the fact that Joseph put his foot on the pedal uh, in Game 1, and I expect him to do the same. Well, Manectric going to give up that Lightning Rod. Doesn't Maybe, maybe doesn't want any kind of shenanigans here with Trace if uh, Gardevoir were to switch out. That stays in 2. So Intimidate not mattering much here, but the Special Attack Boost will uh, almost guarantee a knockout on this Tapu Fini if it doesn't protect. Gardevoir also going to Mega Evolve. Joseph uh, popping off himself. Perhaps he made some kind of prediction here. Uh, Gardevoir now getting the uh, the Pixelate ability. Volt Switch into the Tapu Fini gets rid of that Pokemon and gives uh, Joseph a chance 
to pivot into something else. We haven't seen the sell steal yet, but now would be a very good time for it, unless he wants to maybe fodder off his Tabu Fini for a sweet free switch into something else later. But no, it is the sell steal, and that is not having to worry about a hyper voice or a psy shock at all. It gets the Misty Seed boost, so now that is going to make uh, Gardevoir's attacks even less important. And the Psy Shock into the Snorlax, hitting it on its weaker defense side, but that is just not enough damage. And now Frustration takes out the Gardevoir like it's nothing. And so, just like that, Nathan has lost two of his Pokemon, and he's just got Zapdos and whatever its partner is in the back. Yeah, and now Nathan has to face down a Celesteela with knowing that Joseph still has that Manectric in the back. Yep. So it's Zapdos for one of Nathan's Pokemon that we saw, and it's the Incineroar. So an Intimidate making things, um, well, honestly not that much better. So he does have a little bit of fake out pressure. Might be able to, uh, he could, so you could fake out the Snorlax and then Thunderbolt and then Thunderbolt again. But then you're just letting the Celesteela start setting up. Yeah, if you're Joseph, if you're Nathan here, you're hoping that your Zapdos can pressure Joseph into making a bad play. Nice one. Uh, because that's how he's going to have to get back into this game. Joseph in a position where he has all four Pokemon left. Well, actually, uh, Nathan decides to go for a Heat Wave. He doesn't want to let that Celesteela get away scot-free. So just a bit of chip damage as the Celesteela misses its Leech Seed. That could be a bit of a problem. Incineroar going on the offensive, the Flare Blitz in that Snorlax. It is a physical attack, and it does get a knockout. So that is a huge uh, knockout that he really needed. And uh, now that the Manectric is Mega Evolved, uh, Joseph doesn't have the option to, for that Lightning Rod, and the Tabu Fini is low, so the Manectric is forced to come out. Yeah, Mega Manectric coming in here is not going to be able to one-shot either one of these Pokemon, and Celesteela uh, really needed that Leech Seed to pressure some of these Pokemon to put them in range of a Manectric or a Tapu Fini. Uh, Manectric needs to probably go for a Rain Dance here and uh, make sure that Celesteela uh, does not go down to a Flare Blitz from that Incineroar, uh, and uh, Celesteela needs to start hitting those Leech Seeds to wear these Pokemon down to where Fini can come back in the or come from in the back and start to clean up the game. So a Volt Switch from the Manectric into the Zapdos. It is not super effective, but it does hit it neutrally. Does Look at that damage, though. That is not a whole lot. And now Phoenix forced to come in. So if Nathan uh, predicted that, I mean, either way, whether he predicted that or doubled into the Celesteela, this is going to be huge damage. So the Thunderbolt comes out. Where does it hit? It is the Celesteela. Brings it below half. And now uh, Celesteela does connect with the Leech Seed. But if a Flare Blitz is coming its way, it may not be around it take advantage of it. So Flare Blitz into that slot almost certainly. Let us see if that picks up the knockout. Goodbye Celesteela. So suddenly it's 2-2 two to two and Nathan's the one in the best position. Yeah, and uh, without that lightning rod, uh, Tapu Fini probably in a position because it is more offensive to where a Thunderbolt from Zakdos is going to be able to knock out uh, knock out the Tapu Fini on Joseph's side. It'll depend on how Nathan trained it. We saw the Tailwind, uh, but the fact that it's got something like a Heat Wave for a little bit more offense means that uh, maybe it's a little bit more offensive. Maybe it's something like a modest nature uh, to be able to have the staying power and the offensive power. Right. Uh, I think if, if it's modest, it should it should easily knock out that Tapu Fini. Uh, will be it'll be interesting to see which one is faster. So Tabu Fini gonna protect it knows how vulnerable it is here uh, and I think Joseph really is gonna need it to deal with this Incineroar. Uh, the Volt Switch coming out from the Manectric will bring Zapdos below health as Zapdos tries to get rid of that Fini and now Incineroar ignored gets a chance to Flare Blitz, flexes its muscles and dives right into that Manectric but it only does about a quarter of the damage uh, and now the Leech Seed actually is gonna matter so this Manectric is gonna be able to take slightly less damage all while putting the Zapdos in a position where a Volt Switch might knock it out. Yeah, and depending on, uh, it really comes down to is the Tapu Fini faster than the Zapdos. Uh, the Tailwind Zapdos don't run a ton of speed, so maybe it's there. So here is an overheat. Joseph needing this damage now, so get rid of the Zapdos, Whoa. but it doesn't pick up the knockout that lives with 2 HP. And so the Thunderbolt will almost certainly pick up the knockout on this Tapu Fini. It's gone. And now Incineroar, unchecked, is just going to be able to Flare Blitz down this uh, Manectric, and it's going to be a damage race. And uh, and the, uh, the, what is it, the Incineroar has a head start. So both these Pokemon at near half, after the 2 HP uh, gone from the Zapdos. Manectric's still in the yellow though, and so it's really just gonna be uh, a matter of 
who can do more damage to the other. Joseph has a speed advantage, but Nathan has the damage advantage. Yeah, and Joseph uh, has to be weary of a pinch berry on the Incineroar, so you got to be really careful with yeah. how much damage you're doing here. you got to factor in recoil. you got to factor in um, how much a Flare Blitz is going to do and avoid getting it in pinch berry range and then get a knockout. And you just overheated, so that Volt Switch is not doing anywhere near enough damage. So Flare Blitz is going to come out. Do another quarter to Manectric, put it in the red. Uh, it's not enough to proc the Pinchberry, though. So perhaps if Joseph gets a crit here, it could be over. Yeah, he needs a crit on this Volt Switch. If he doesn't get the crit, it's game over. Nope. And, yeah, he does not get the crit. Puts Nathan in berry range. And as you can see, Nathan flexing that uh, game two uh, is going to be able to bring this into a game three as Flare Blitz is going to knock out the Manectric here. And Marty, I, wanted, I want you to take a look at Nathan's eyes. What do you see there? Uh, he, he removed the glasses. Oh. So uh, maybe um, they were the cursed. glasses were uh, something like, uh, what you know, the weights that Piccolo wears. And oh, he sure. had to uh, get rid of those to, uh, right. to go to full power so glasses removed full power Nathan Wright going into game three uh, versus Joseph here and uh, I'm, I'm really excited it's my it's my favorite thing I said it all day yesterday we are going to game three well Pokemon wants to be esports but turns out it's actually anime so um, there is uh, we're going to game three a very exciting match honestly I didn't think I gotta be honest I didn't think Nathan could do it but he played so well he was able to preserve the two Pokemon that he needed we said at the beginning of the match that the Incineroar and the uh, Zapdos were going to be crucial, and so preserving that was huge. But I want to bring up another point, this Manectric. So it has the Rain Dance and the Overheat, but what it lacks is the Snarl. Mm -hmm. And so that was something that could have come in handy. He didn't have that option. But my question for you is, was it a mistake for Joseph to Mega Evolve? You know, he didn't necessarily need the damage to KO that Feeny, and if he had had the Lightning Rod throughout that round, he might have been able to eke out the victory. I think so, but just the uh, the, the damage that you're accustomed to when you have a Mega Manectric Archetype on your team, uh, you're used to getting that Mega Evolution and getting the special attack boost so that you can chip things and put them in range of a Tapu Feeny, of a Celesteela being able to consistently wear things down. So, uh, you know, it's obviously what got him here, so mm -hmm. stick with what we're Works, but definitely something to consider, and I think you bring up a great point. Uh, maybe regular Manectric is the call here for this Game 3. Yeah, and that's not something that we usually get a chance to see. Although Lightning Rod has historically been a very important ability, obviously it helped Wolf Glick win the World Championship in 2016 with his Raichu. We saw how well he's doing today, so you know, uh, there's the question if maybe uh, both these players using uh, their expertise with the game knowledge to, yeah. to I recognize the importance of Lightning Rod. Yeah, and I think uh, both uh, both trainers uh, called the leads correctly for yeah. Game 2. I'd expect them to lead with the exact same thing. Uh, go with what works. This manectric Feeny combo has been uh, what got Joseph to this point. And uh, Nathan uh, understanding that I need to probably keep Incineroar in the back, keep it safe, keep it ready to take on the amount of work that is uh, delivering a top four finish uh, for Nathan uh, by way of making sure Incineroar is the, the carry Pokemon here. Yeah, well, and on top of that, I think we want to talk about the Snorlax because that was a big part of that game. In game one, it did such it did so much work, and in game two, it looked like it was ready to do a lot of work, but uh, it, was, it got low, and, and Joe, Nathan was able to take it out. We actually see some big mix-ups here uh, at... From Nathan, we get the uh, Incineroar and the Gardevoir, and we see the Porygon 2 make its debut alongside this Snorlax. So it looks like Joseph just wants to set up Trick Room hard and uh, let his Snorlax finish this set. Yeah, and I, I actually like the lead for Nathan, too. Knockoff threatens both of the Pokemon on Joseph's side, getting rid of that berry from Snorlax and getting rid of the Eviolite from Porygon 2. Uh, so I, I like the fact that Incineroar is out there to make a huge threat uh, from the big cat uh, turn one. Uh, Gardevoir is going to be able to deal unresisted hyper voice damage to both of these Pokemon and if Gardevoir is holding something like the Trick Room maybe we see a spicy play turn one and the reversal of a Trick Room uh, but I think if you're Porygon uh, unless you know that Gardevoir either does have or does not have the Trick Room you can uh, it looks pretty comfortable right you can just Trick Room and set up Belly Drum. Yeah it's something that we did see in 2015 so it'll be interesting to see if it happens here. Manectric going to come out Lightning Run not going to matter much but it could be in a position for later. Oh, actually, it's a double switch, so Feeny is what's coming out. Looks like Joseph decides, I want to get this brain up, go with what I'm used to. Misty Surge coming out, blocking any kind of status, though not going to matter too much. Let's see what this Gardevoir does. First, got to Mega Evolve, got to get its new ability, got to get that boost to your stats. So, <clears throat> very good, uh, important decision there. 
and it actually goes for a Psy Shock. So there is not going to be any kind of reversal now that the Porygon switched out. It actually does a lot of damage. So the knockoff, uh, it looks like Nathan was really prioritizing getting rid of that Snorlax. You can't knock off a Z Crystal though, uh, but you can put Tapu Fini in a very dangerous amount of health. Yeah, Tapu Fini in Psy Shock range from the Gardevoir if it decides to uh, go for that once again. And like you said in the pregame, uh, this Manectric does not have Snarl, so no way to mitigate the damage from this Mega Gardevoir. So, uh, you know, Tapafini is packing Protect. It can uh, stave off another turn if it would like to. Uh, but uh, Incineroar also in a threatened position as well. Yeah, it's going to get out of dodge, and Zapdos will come in instead, maybe to uh, pressure this Fini even further and potentially punish a Mega Evolution. It actually also gets to take advantage of the Misty Seed, so its special defense is boosted. But uh, it looks like Joseph, you know, wants that extra damage, is going to Mega Evolve, so no more Lightning Rod. He's going to have to do this uh, do this the old-fashioned way. Intimidate, not really mattering here for both of these special attackers, but a Volt Switch will be a little bit stronger, and it's going to hit the Gardevoir. I like, I like the way it switches back and forth between both those Pokemon. You never know which it's going to hit. And so now Joseph gets a chance to pivot, maybe back into that Porygon 2, which is so bulky. It's actually the Snorlax instead. Uh, and doesn't have to worry about that knockoff anymore, so it has a better opportunity to set up. Hyper Voice, though, is going to come out. That spread, it's going to do a lot of damage, but the Finny hangs on, and it gets a crit on the Snorlax, but that may have been a mistake that Nathan is going to pay for, because here's the Hydro Vortex. Ooh, aloha, everybody. We are going to ride the waves of the beaches with this Tapu Fini firing off a Hydro Vortex. Clutch survival there. It's going to be able to do big damage. Uh, the Zapdos is going to be able to avoid some of that damage with that Misty Seed, though. Yeah, and honestly, that's like almost been a trend of today is these Tapu Finis hanging out with a little bit of HP and being Ooh. able to, uh, to get off a big Hydro Vortex. Jeremy Odena did it yesterday, and now it's Joseph's turn. Yeah, and uh, Zapdos saying, you know what, I, I, I'm i a big surfer myself. Uh, I can take that damage, and uh, if I'm packing something like Roost, I can get rid of that like it never even happened. Yep. Uh, that cost Feeny a lot. Now it's down uh, in the red. So a Heat Wave here to finish it off, even though it resists that Fire-type attack, it has n almost no HP left. So Feeny goes down, gets a little bit of chip onto the Snorlax, and now a Psy Shock comes out. That's going to do a lot here put it in range of the berry. So if a belly drum comes out, it's going to be right back to the red, and I think Joseph is going to be forced to keep this Snorlax in a passive position. He does indeed recycle, so he, uh, he he's going to be able to stick around for quite some time, but he's not able to belly drum, and Snorlax is just kind of dead weight, as it were. <laughs> solid, uh, solid play there from Joseph going for the recycle. I think belly drum, even though it would have got him some uh, immediate offense, I don't think he gets a chance to use it no. uh, with uh, two fast Faster Pokemon like a Gardevoir and a Zapdos on the field at red health. So uh, recycle good play, giving the Snorlax the chance to stay in this game. Uh, and if you're Porygon 2, I think uh, getting the Trick Room here, you know you can survive both hits from these Pokemon, uh, puts you in a, in, in a chance where you can try to win this game. Zapdos sacrificing its Misty Seed boost because this Incineroar is just so crucial to dealing with both of these Pokemon. Intimidate going to weaken the Snorlax, not really mattering for the Porygon 2. Psyshock comes out. Onto the Snorlax, it's going to pop its berry once again. So, potentially forcing it to recycle uh, another time while this Porygon 2 sets up a Trick Room. Uh, but let's see. So, Snorlax does recycle, and that means Porygon 2 is indeed Trick Rooming. And so, it's got its berry back. It is at full health. And now it's going to be able to finally set up that uh, Belly Drum. And Nathan is going to be the one who is going to have to uh, start pumping out the damage. Yeah, if you're Nathan here, normally you're faking out turn one with an Incineroar as it hits the field. I think you gotta uh, I think you gotta knock that berry off, but if you're Joseph, you could read into that and just go for the belly drum early yep. so that the knockoff doesn't do a whole lot of damage and you already get uh, to maximize attack. Well, it is the fake out, so it's going to prevent the Snorlax from doing anything this turn as Porygon f 2 free to Ice Beam. Won't get a freeze on this Gardevoir thanks to the terrain advantage, and Gardevoir just wants to Hyper Voice. It wants to start chipping both these Pokemon, and it wants to keep putting the Snorlax back into its berry range so that it has to keep using that Recycle. Yeah, and uh, really forcing... Uh Joseph to use, or Nathan really forcing to, use, to make Joseph, Joseph use those turns of Trick Room, not to be offensive, but to be defensive and continue to use Ice Beam, which is not going to do a ton of damage. It can gradually chip the Gardevoir, right. uh, but not threatening any kind of knockout on either one of these Pokemon. And Snorlax, when it's in Trick Room, it wants to do big damage, uh, but it's just uh, having to eat. Well, actually, oh my goodness, we're seeing the Snatch, something that we've seen 
only rarely, and it's actually going to steal the recycle. It'll fail because it's still holding its own berry, but now Snorlax doesn't have any way to recover. This oh. Ice Beam, though, it nets the freeze. There's no Misty terrain, and so now Gardevoir doesn't do anything. So what a turn from both of these players. The Snatch is such a good read, but it's ruined by a freeze from the, uh, from the Porygon, too. Yeah, I mean, Gardevoir, I don't know if it likes Disney movies because it is now frozen and definitely not in a position where it wants to be. It needs to be threatening out offense and now not really doing much of anything. Uh, the Incineroar now has to face down both Porygon 2 and a Snorlax, and man, would that have been clutch if he had snatched that belly drum. Well, now Snorlax says, okay, fine. You want to try and snatch my moves, snatch half my health, but it, uh, it actually isn't what Nathan's going for. Snorlax gets its boost without any kind of recovery, and Ice Beam keeps keeps chipping away at that frozen Gardevoir. Flare Blitz coming out though, that's gonna do some big damage to the Snorlax, but I don't think it's gonna be able to pick up a knockout. Yeah, look, it hangs on with just a little bit of HP. Uh, Gardevoir thaws out though, and it reverses the Trick Room, so we actually do get that move's reveal, and now Nathan is in a perfect position to finish off this Snorlax and start, and maybe even knock off the Eviolite on the Porygon too. Yeah, huge thaw. You gotta target down that Snorlax, or else it's going to knock out one of the Pokemon on your side. Oh, As Joseph! You just see the forfeit. Wow, he knows when he's done, and what a turn of events. But going from that freeze and the snatch uh, to uh, a thaw and reversing the Trick Room, that is uh, just what what a way to make it to top four. Maybe the heat that is in Cineroar here at Charlotte was what helped Gardevoir unthaw, and uh, that was so clutch. It, if, if he doesn't unthaw in that turn, it's over. It's completely over the other way, and I think that's why you saw Joseph lock in the forfeit. Um, both trainers played this uh, fantastically. Nathan waiting to the last moment uh, to reveal the Trick Room yeah. tech on the Gardevoir, which yeah. paid off to his advantage. Uh, Nathan now moving on to top four. Yeah, and he's going to be facing Wolf Glick, so we saw Wolf win last round, and now it's you know you have some time to think about how these uh, matchups are going to play out. You can maybe make some predictions. You can go ahead and pop those in the chat. But really, it's going to be a battle of two very talented trainers as Nathan searches for his first regional win in the Masters division, and Wolf is looking to uh, add another under his belt. I know he is up there for the most regionals ever. Uh, I think Aaron Zhang still has him beat out by one, so he may be able to tie that up. In the meantime, though, we're going to take a quick break, and we will be right back with our next top four eight match. Don't go anywhere. 